Hello, my name is Jasmine. I'm a holistic counselor, an energy healer, and a breathwork facilitator. And today I want to talk about chronic illness, specifically celiac disease, and what it has to do with mental health. So I'm not a doctor, but I have almost three decades of lived experience with celiac disease and the impact that that and trauma and inflammation has on mental health. So I'm not here for any kind of medical advice, but some of the things that I've experienced and researched, I think really have the capacity to help people because there's a lot of information that many of us are not told. Even, you know, our PCPs or doctors aren't going to tell us about these kinds of autoimmune diseases and chronic illness and the way that they relate to mental health. So I hope that this is helpful for you. If you don't know, celiac disease is unfortunately common. Um, researchers believe at this point it's more than one out of every 100 people. That is 1% of the population, which is huge. That is a huge number of people, a huge portion of the people that we might meet in our lives. There are some studies that suggest that this prevalence is even higher than we might realize and that gluten allergies and celiac disease and autoimmune disease at large are rising at rates that really can't be fully explained by just a level of awareness or just by diagnostic efforts alone. So celiac disease is, just to quickly define it, is a condition where your immune system attacks its own cells when you eat gluten, which is a protein that's found in things like wheat and rye and barley and other grains. So it's different, celiac disease acts differently than a gluten allergy or gluten sensitivity, but sometimes also has the same symptoms. So I'm going to address both in this video in terms of how it can impact our mental health in a huge way. Celiac is traditionally known, and if you go to the doctor, if you've been diagnosed with celiac, or if you think that you have a gluten allergy, you might hear from the doctor that these would be some of your symptoms. Typically, they're mostly known for digestive uh, symptoms or issues, but honestly, this is just the tip of the iceberg. So you might have symptoms like uh, bloating, stomach pain, nausea, extreme weight gain or weight loss, um, malnutrition, vitamin deficiencies, anemia, changes in bowel movement, joint inflammation and soreness is also a huge aspect of it. Um, eventually loss of bone density, extreme chronic fatigue is something that people um, talk about all the time with celiac, skin rashes, headaches, ulcers, mouth sores, uh, lessening the function of your other organs like your spleen or thyroid or liver. Um, this can also be hormonal imbalances. It can absolutely impact your nervous system, alter your sleep cycles, can delay puberty or overall give you systemic inflammation. However, while those are really important symptoms to note and to know about, especially if you're thinking about whether or not you might have celiac or thinking about getting tested, some of the lesser known mental health impacts of celiac disease can also show up as severe brain fog or cognitive impairment. Brain fog is something that people doesn't really get noticed that often because we're all kind of hyped up on coffee to function and just trying to, you know, go about our worlds in this hyper productivity state, not even necessarily realizing or thinking that it's just, you know, oh, I'm tired, so I'm not thinking straight. Brain fog is a huge aspect, and if you've been in a state of brain fog, perhaps because you might have undiagnosed celiac for a long time, you might not even notice. It might just feel like a way of being. Celiac can also, some of the mental health symptoms can also be depression and even all the way up to suicidality. So a lot of people who have celiac disease, and I see a lot of patients or clients with um, autoimmune diseases at large, depression and even in suicidal ideation can be huge symptoms of these. Um, that when someone, <laughs> what I like to, uh, to like say is got gluten, you know, means that you like... Uh, ate a particle or something of gluten that really created this huge inflammatory response, some people, even perhaps their only symptom, might be depression. Um, it can also be anxiety or panic. Some people suffer panic attacks through um, having celiac disease or an autoimmune disease. ADHD, they can also be diagnosed with or diagnosed with OCD, um, obsessive compulsive disorder. 
and all the way up to hallucinations, delusions, or psychosis. So again, this is something that we never talk about. Doctors won't really tell you that these are also some of the symptoms that could be involved with uh, celiac disease. And I want to bring it back to my story with celiac disease. So as a kid growing up, I didn't find out that I had celiac disease until I was about 22, which means I spent 22 years of my life with an undiagnosed autoimmune disease that just wrecked my body. Um, I consider myself to be kind of, you know, born with some of these things. There's a lot that happens in utero, especially if your, you know, parent may have been in a state of extreme stress or trauma. And so I was born a very colicky baby, a baby that had a lot of already digestive issues. And this kind of just, I grew up thinking that that was normal. I would maybe complain about feeling full really, really fast or um, always, you know, having like weird, irregular bowel movements or pain after I ate every single time I ate. Um, but it was almost as if I was constantly dissociated from the pain because it just was so common for me. I didn't know what life was like without it. And it wasn't something that we really talked about, and it wasn't something that anyone really looked into. Also, growing up, I was really active. I loved uh, dance and, you know, all the, like, different kinds of activities, karate. And I would find myself getting constantly and consistently tired, foggy. There were some days where I just really couldn't function, and people always thought of me as someone that always had my head in the clouds. This is also a result of, you know, childhood trauma. We can kind of live up in our heads, so that's a component as well. But I would find myself getting so lethargic that sometimes it would feel like I couldn't even lift a finger. And I thought that I was just lazy. I thought that that's just the way that, that life was. Uh, flash forward to, you know, chronically having, I, I think I got strep throat seven times in a row. My immune system was clearly dysfunctional. I was always sick. And again, that was just kind of talked about as like a normal childhood thing uh, that kids get sick, that, you know, maybe I just had a, a bad immune system or I was just unlucky that I was constantly getting ill. Um, I also had, um, I wasn't diagnosed with it, but I had very, very, you know, compulsive thoughts as a kid, which again can also be related to trauma. I have experienced childhood trauma and abuse. And so... Um, that was something as a kid, like I used to always have to chew on each side of my mouth an equal amount of times, or I would have to put everything that I owned in color order in a specific way, or I had to be wrapped up in a blanket in a very, very specific way. So this kind of, um, obsessive or compulsory behavior as well as a kid. Then when I was in college and I was actually actively dealing with PTSD and flashback memories, in college, I developed ulcers, which again was kind of just talked about as, oh, you're stressed, oh, you've experienced trauma, so of course you have ulcers. They did the endoscopy, they gave me the normal medication and told me that I would be fine. Um, but I found myself, you know, also having a lot of nutritional deficiencies. Again, the same, you know, pain after I ate all the time. Sometimes it was so debilitating, I'd have to call my you know, boyfriend at the time to come pick me up from like the dining hall and walk me back to my apartment because I was so hunched over and in so much pain that I could barely walk back to my dorm room. Um, then after a couple of years of living with those ulcers, finally I hit a breaking point at 22 where I had a massive, um, what should I call it? <laughs> massive mental breakdown. And again, there's always multiple reasons why these things happen. There are so many factors that played into that for me, including, you know, working as a crisis counselor in the mental health system. Um, it was around a time in my life that I was really dealing with this trauma, childhood trauma in an active way. Um, there were so many factors. However, celiac disease was absolutely one of those major factors. At 22, 
I had essentially what could be described as a psychotic break. I started seeing and hearing things that other people don't see and hear. I had panic attacks. I felt like I had just blipped into a complete altered state of consciousness, and that lasted about three months that I was going in and out of different states of altered states and then lucidity. And this was absolutely debilitating, but it was also the thing that helped me figure out the ways that I was living that was completely unsustainable for me. And I have other, you know, videos and thoughts on altered states and psychosis and mental health and all of that. So I'm going to stick here to, to the piece about celiac disease. Um, I, one of the things that I started to realize brought on some of those altered states in, in a heavier or harder hitting way was when I would have, um, you know, like a big New York deli sandwich or a lot of like fried foods or um, things that was, was just really messing with my gut in a huge way. And I had zero awareness. I mean, I grew up lower middle class I grew up on Top Ramen, I grew up on Chef Boyardee, I grew up on all the things that, you know, kids in the early 90s grow up on. Terrible, terrible things, McDonald's, mac and cheese, didn't know how to cook for myself. And so this is definitely part of it, I mean, definitely part of the nutritional deficiencies, leaky gut, all of that. Um, but finally a friend said to me, I know that you're going through a lot right now, I know that this probably isn't the only thing going on, but you should get tested for celiac disease. And my first thought was, I don't feel any different when I have, you know, gluten versus not. And he explained to me, which I think is one of the most important things to understand about celiac disease or gluten allergy, is that your body tries to adapt to what is happening in terms of trying desperately to take all of the things that you're eating, even the things that are making you sick or that you're allergic to, and trying to cope with that. So I was living in a constant state of what my norm was, was a constant state of brain fog, of stomach pain, of malnutrition, sleeplessness, everything. And so I wasn't going to notice necessarily that one sandwich was making me feel a little bit off, right? He said, you need to, and this is also like, you know, well-researched, you need to go off of gluten or like eliminate it completely from your diet for two weeks and then add it back in so that you can actually see what it does to your body. So I did this and I also went to go see a doctor and asked them for the specific test for celiac disease and I came up positive um, for celiac. And also in those two weeks that I didn't have gluten and I was very conscious of cross-contamination, he had been living with celiac at the time for a long time. And so he was really able to, this friend of mine was able to, to guide me through this whole process and help me, you know, figure out what had gluten in it, what didn't, because it's complicated. It's in so many different things. And I, you know, the altered states and the hallucinations and all of that, it's, it wasn't like a miraculous completely went away right away. However, all of a sudden, I could finally feel what life was like to wake up not exhausted. I could finally wake up in the morning and not feel exhausted. I could finally, I felt what it was like for the first time at 22 years old to have a normal bowel movement. <laughs> I... I finally felt what it was like to not live with a chronic state of brain fog or to not feel tired all the time or to not feel inflamed and like my joints were on fire. Um, I finally, like the depression and eventually the altered state with, of course, a lot of other work, a lot of other spiritual work, a lot of work on my trauma, a lot of, you know, changing my job, everything. It really forced me to change everything about my life. But focusing here on celiac in particular, that was huge. Now, there are some doctors that will tell you that if you go gluten-free, then everything will be fine. That is not true. That is not the case. Because if you've lived with celiac disease or any autoimmune disease or leaky gut or food allergy for a long time, 
it's not going to be miraculously fixed the second that you take something out of your diet. It's going to take a lot of work to heal your gut lining and to heal the inflammation that's been happening in your body for so long. So that wasn't the end of my story, but that was a particular turning point. And eventually I started to work with people, which I'll talk about a little bit later, um, who could help me figure out some of these other things that are involved with celiac disease. But first I want to talk about why specifically celiac does have an impact on mental health or autoimmune diseases at large, why they have an impact on mental health. So we're still in this phase where it takes science and research about I think they said on average 14 years to catch up or to actually be you know released into public knowledge so we are not quite there yet and there's a lot of research that still needs to be done but based on the research that i've done there is a massive role of the immune system in mental health that is still again this research is still emergent and relatively new but researchers such as dr edward bullmore who wrote a book called um the brain inflamed, I believe, or something like that. I'll put it in the comments below. He, Dr. Bulmer is the head of psychiatry at Cambridge University, and him and his colleagues have found that um, inflammation, which is an immune system response, may be one of the really massive factors that underlie mental health diagnoses such as depression, schizophrenia, bipolar, or OCD. And this comes from a place of really shifting our whole kind of scientific worldview from things like depression, OCD, anxiety, all these things are, you know, some chemicals in your brain that are off to understanding the systems behind that that could contribute. So it was previously believed that cytokines, which are the um, immune system cells, it was previously believed that they could not pass the blood brain barrier, the BBB. But that has recently been dispelled, allowing researchers to really understand or believe that inflammation in the body, especially in the brain, might play a huge role in mental health diagnoses. So in an autoimmune disease like celiac, for example, the body experiences a lot of systemic inflammation, the immune system attacking its own cells, and celiac is often associated with what we call leaky gut, which is when the gut lining is compromised, allowing toxins from what you eat and your environment to kind of leak out into the bloodstream, causing the immune system to be on high alert. And then um, that those toxins can eventually make their way to the brain, causing the brain to become inflamed as well. So when someone is diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, it's usually not the only thing that's going on. It's not as simple as you have celiac and that's it. It's not as simple as you have um, you know, rheumatoid arthritis or lupus or fibromyalgia or any of these other ones. Folks like us are often, like I said, very sick as children, repeatedly having different viruses that attacks our system. We may have other co-occurring infections. Eventually, I realized that I also have candida, Lyme disease, and, you know, repeated instances of strep throat, which can stay in the body for a long time. This means that our immune system is not just overtaxed, but it is under-resourced. It might be chronically hypervigilant and not have the resources that it needs to fully eliminate these viruses and toxins from the system. It also means that with a compromised gut lining, we don't get the nutrition and the vitamins that we actually need to heal and restore the system. So it kind of becomes a really vicious cycle. Linking us back to mental health, researchers have found that perhaps up to 90% of the serotonin that we produce in the body is produced in the gut, not actually in the brain. So this could be one of the ways that we start to understand multiple biological imbalances happening at once. I always like to say, you know, biology is important. It's not the only thing. It might not be just in your mind when it comes to a mental health diagnosis, but it's also not just in your brain. It's not just about your brain chemistry. It's about full body systems, inflammation, and everything that's kind of co-occurring at once. So the most important thing that I believe here to note is the myth that People with chronic illness or, you know, someone with celiac or an autoimmune disease are, of course, they're depressed because they're chronically ill. 
asked it, sure, there's a way that this could absolutely be true. Um, however, it's a really reductionist way of framing that and is not the whole story. There are typically massive underlying biological factors that are co-creating an experience of brain fog, leaky gut, depression, lethargy, anxiety, and so many other things that we tend to label as solely a mental health issue. So I also want to speak here about the role of trauma, because like I said, I am someone and I see a lot of clients that have this trifecta too. This is why I started to get so passionate about this, because I've seen it time and time again. I mean, I've been working in the mental, in the mental health space for many years and have seen that when people present with some type of mental health issue, there's usually some other physical health concern going on also, and usually some type of trauma. So this trifecta between a mental health concern, trauma, and an autoimmune disease or a chronic illness is something, this is the, this is the triangle that I like to kind of delve into. So how does trauma play a role in this? Dr. Bullmore and some of his colleagues also say that there are um, direct quote here. There are fascinating new insights into how high levels of social stress can increase bodily inflammation, and there's growing evidence that people who have experienced adversity or abuse in childhood are more likely to be inflamed as children and adults. Other research shows that they're not just more likely to be inflamed, they're also more likely to be hospitalized with an autoimmune disease and um, to experience mental health concerns. Trauma, I mean, this has been shown time and time again, is massively correlated with inflammation in the body. Um, inflammation is kind of seen as this mediator between physical or environmental harm and mental health. So in other words, inflammation is kind of the pathway through which we can understand the biological impact of extreme stress and trauma. And these kinds of experiences that cause inflammation in the body, although it's not yet proven to be, you know, causal, there's so much that needs to happen research-wise in order for something to actively be understood as causal, it is certainly correlated with mental health concerns. So a few things that we should know about celiac disease and mental health. Number one. Although it is not definitively known what causes celiac disease, and you'll see that, you know, if you research time and time again, many, you know, websites, researchers, doctors say we don't know what causes an autoimmune disease. But we can point to a variety of factors, and in fact, I think it's actually really important to understand that any phenomenon in the body or the mind has multiple factors that contribute, such as Sure, genetics, yes, trauma, inflammation, issues of the immune system, the endocrine system, food allergies, and other co-occurring health concerns that all happen at once. And we have to be willing to look at them all at once in order to really address what's happening. Number two, if you have celiac disease or gluten allergy, it's very likely, like I said, that you won't notice after eat, eating gluten if you have been eating gluten for a long time. So if someone says, hey, you might have celiac disease or you recognize any of these symptoms in yourself, don't write it off right away. Go get tested if you can. Just go get tested. It's a simple blood test. And then in order to get confirmed, you have to have a biopsy, but at least get the blood test that can say, yeah, your body is reactive to the gluten protein. Um, or getting tested for other autoimmune diseases as well, because celiac disease obviously is not the only one that can impact your mental health. So, um, or if you want to, if you don't want to get tested and you just want to do it on your own, eliminate gluten, like really look at every, every product that you're eating, making sure that it doesn't have some byproduct of gluten or cross-contamination in it. Take it out of your diet for two weeks, add it back in after you're starting from a clean slate and see how you feel. It can be crucial. Number three is to understand that celiac disease, if you have it or, or any autoimmune disease, honestly, that you might not feel any physical effects at first, you might only have mental or emotional symptoms. I have met many people who are diagnosed with something like celiac disease or an autoimmune disease that only have 
mental and emotional symptoms that only have uh, depression or suicidal thoughts or anxiety or OCD. So it's really crucial to understand that this may be one of the factors that are contributing to something like depression or anxiety for you. Number four is that going gluten-free, like I said, is not enough to heal celiac disease or an autoimmune disease for many, many people. It requires really understanding all of the co-occurring things that are happening in your body and working with a doctor that's willing to do that, which is so hard to find. I understand functional medicine I've found. Functional medicine doctors can do that quite well and can really help you understand the way that your body has been responding through this autoimmune disease. So for example, I found out that I have SIBO, small intestinal bacteria overgrowth, IBS, malnutrition, vitamin deficiencies, other co-occurring food allergies, other bacterial infections and fungal infections, um, and Lyme disease all at the same time. <laughs> and that's actually really common with something like an autoimmune disease. They all, it all kind of happens together. So, um, it can require, healing celiac disease can require things like changing your diet um, in more ways than just going gluten-free. It could mean taking anti-inflammatories or uh, antifungals, antibiotics, herbal or prescription, um, and receiving other types of therapies for the nervous system as well, because your nervous system, your endocrine system, your immune system, they are all really highly intertwined. And that leads me to this fifth piece, which is that healing the nervous system, especially if you are someone with this co-occurrence of an autoimmune disease and trauma, can play a huge role in healing from an autoimmune disease and trauma. <laughs> so the nervous system is a huge key piece here. This might um, mean that you know celiac or the systemic inflammation, depending on how long you've been living with it, can actually have structural changes to your body. Uh, for myself, I can say that I, you know, my nervous system being thrown off by trauma and having this constant systemic inflammation led to my diaphragm constricting and tightening so much, not being able to breathe at my full capacity, then having a hiatal hernia, which means that part of my stomach is poking up through my diaphragm into my esophagus, leading to exercise-induced asthma or asthma at large, changes in breathing patterns, and other musculoskeletal issues that your body kind of goes through to try to adapt to the ways that you structurally have changed because of this nervous system response that can then kind of keep you in a loop of a chronic, you know, fight or flight mode. That means addressing the nervous system is super crucial. So again, also understanding that Autoimmune diseases, celiac disease can, not always, but can have st produce structural changes in your body that can either start with the nervous system or impact the nervous system as well. So again, finding a doctor or ways of, you know, therapeutics or healing modalities that really address the nervous system specifically. I'm thinking of things like osteopathic medicine, um, even things like massage, relaxing the nervous system through that. Uh, physical therapy, it could be breath work, really actively working with the breath for emotional release through this nervous system relaxation, things like that can be really supportive. So to conclude, if you are struggling with celiac disease or any autoimmune disease and you know that you also have mental and emotional impacts or that they are kind of co-occurring for you, know that you are not weird or crazy or alone in any of this, that your body is doing its best to heal. And it is possible. It is possible to heal all of these things together and to find the right supports for you. It's very often not going to come in a single person, a single healer, a single doctor, but it's going to come from your knowledge and wisdom that your body already has, that your body is trying to tell you what's happening and to create a team for yourself of the right types of support systems. I know that we don't live in a world that gives us easy access to that at all, and most of us don't have access to doctors that are able or willing to see the whole person, but they do exist, and at the very least I can tell you, I've been there. I feel you, and I hope that in some way, shape, or form, this was helpful for you. I will see you soon.